You've been here since the 8th? Yes. You since live around the block? A couple blocks away, yes. We're in the Gridley Fairgrounds. Yes. Gridley, Colorado. Gridley, California. California, never mind. <laughs> there's a there's a place in Colorado that sounds a lot like that. <laughs> and I'm from there. Oh, okay. Anyway. How many people do you think are here right now? Oh, that number changes by the hour. Um, I know in the back, in just tents and RVs, there's at least 100 in the back here between, because each of some of these RVs have eight, nine people just all crammed up in them. Um, so I'd say about 100 in the back, um, inside. I don't know the numbers on the inside. I haven't talked to them today, um, but I know they were still busting people in. Busting people in still. Yeah. Because a couple places, um, they're closing down all the shelters in Yuba City. Mm -hmm. um, some in Oroville are closing down. Just all the little ones that don't have access to needs and, you know, they're not certified shelters are all closing down and they're still bringing them in here. So um, this morning I came in and there's four new tents just this morning that weren't here when I left last night. Okay. So the number literally changes hourly. If you could make anything happen to resolve this or soothe this situation, what would it be? I'm just trying to, every family here has different needs. I mean, some of them, if they had a car, they'd, they would literally be on their way, they'd be set um, and they would be okay. Some of them I'm still trying to get little trailers for um, so that they have a temporary home um, while they rebuild. Mm -hmm. um, because some of them lost everything. A lot of the people here, you know, fled on foot or their cars were so badly damaged um, that they're beyond repair. Um, some of them, you know, the batteries melted and the head blew. And right. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's a person-by-person, case-by-case um, situation, unfortunately. But if I could say, you know, it's 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 meeting the needs. There's I can name five people right now that if they had a car, they they would be good to go. They would be able because some of them lost their jobs too. So say I'm I'm a fire victim, you know, and I lose my job, I lose my home, I lose my car. How do you start over from that without a vehicle? Because how would I be able to go and apply for a job or go to a job interview or go even buy my own groceries or be independent at all? without a vehicle. These people had that independence and all of that was taken from them. So I know I'm working really hard trying to figure out cars for some of these families and these people. And do we know, do they know to even look on their policy to see if they had liability insurance that would cover no, that? I, didn't. I mean, these, these are, it's, it's a different type of people. I mean, th these are, these are mountain people. You know, a lot of their stuff was bought outright or paid for. They were really good at managing their finances, making sure things got paid off or paid for. But a lot of them didn't carry insurance either. Um, I don't know, a lot of them just have the liability that isn't going to cover, you know, purchasing a new vehicle. Because um, I've been going over a lot of that paperwork with these families and with these people. And um, a lot of them we had our fingers crossed or, you know, and I know, um, for example, Jim, he's one I'm trying to get a car for right now. Out of all of this, he's gotten a total of $849 um, to start over with and to move forward with. And um, it, it's it's been a struggle for sure. How do we know these people that need cars weren't people that needed cars before and that they're going to do the right things with them? I vetted the people on my, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have five people personally on my list of people, but I've probably been asked by about 30 or 40 people here. Okay. Can you get me a car? Okay. And out of those 30 or 40 right now, I have five on my personal list that I'm really struggling. And I know every family back here for the most part, except the new ones that just came in the last couple days. I'm still getting to know them. How do you know them? I've been here since day one. I go tent to tent. How nice to meet you. My name's Crystal. What's your story? I've helped them fill out their paperwork with FEMA, with Red Cross, with anything. I've seen the pictures of their homes. I've seen the pictures of their cars, you know, what they get, you know, and um, I've been with them every step of the way through this process. Why are you here and what's your interest in all this? Um, I'm just a mom from the community. Um, we set up here before Red Cross got here. We were setting up and um, trying to figure out how we could help these people. Um, and my part in it all is I was the one that came across the street and put my feet on the ground and literally day one, tent to tent. Well, at that time it wasn't even tent to tent. It was person to person. They were all lined up. They didn't have tents. I'm the one that got them the tents and the blankets and the sleeping bags and um, 
every day there's a need. You know, you come and there's a new family or there's, hey, where can I find this? And I'm kind of their person at this point to direct them the right way with what they need and where they need to go. Okay. We talked about five people out of 30. You've kind of distilled it down to five people that you could uh, vouch for yes. that could use a vehicle and it would get them back on their feet. 100%. And, um, and they would be able to start fresh. They didn't have liability insurance to cover fire damage to their vehicle. What other things besides that? What do people need immediately right now to be more comfortable? What do people need to get their minds right? Because I've talked to a lot of people that seem awful rattled. And then what else besides cars long term could we do to make a difference? Anything like things or rides or bus tickets? Like talk to me about that. Um, gas cards I know are huge. Some people do have access to a vehicle that they can borrow and the people are like, hey, just put some gas in it, you're good. Um, so I know I do have a lot of requests for gas cards um, just so they could do that. A lot of the stuff that they need to get to is in Chico or Orville and we do have buses that are shuttling them, but um, I don't know how much longer the buses, the that are called, we call them the special buses. It says special on the side because they are specifically for the evacuees. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times they just go and they drop them at one central location in Orville. They walk the other distances um, and take care of it. Um, but I know gas cards are huge with these people. A lot of them are in donor RVs that I was able to get for them. Um, people have been reaching out to me and it's huge. They have huge generous hearts um, and have been loaning me um, their RVs and their trailers. And um, I only put families in it that I can vouch for and be like, these are good people. Because there are, we also inherited um, a lot of Paradise is, you know, homeless, transients, mm -hmm. drug users. Um, so I would never put anybody in something that I didn't want to put them in my own RV. Um, well, let's be clear that we care about those people too, but we also oh, understand Every that they're... Every single person is a human. Yeah. And I can't, like, say say you were to be like, hey, I've got this RV. These people can use it for five months. I, I can't consciously put certain people in it that I know would destroy your property that you were so generous with. I completely understand what you're saying. Some people just don't have the mental capacity to take care of things and so they we need to be help. aware of that. It's I'm just a factor. I'm still taking care of them. They've got their blankets. I make sure they have food every day. Um, I just can't put them in, in certain things, if, if that makes sense. Fair enough. How about uh, the donor RVs? I mean, that's not going to be forever. What happens when that time runs out to those families? What's What are they trying to do while they're in these donor RVs to make it so they don't need them anymore? Do you know anything about that? We've been working on it. Um, I work with each family, you know, every day. We're like, what's the next step here? You know, some people are just waiting on FEMA to come through for them. Um, some are just waiting on the roads to open back up. They know that their houses are standing, um, but they don't know yet if they've been red tagged. If they're red tagged, then they're no longer inhabitable because they were too close to the fire line. So a lot of people are just fingers crossed, hoping to go and have a yellow or green X on their house. And um, we're, we're still, some of them are just still in that waiting process trying to figure it out. A lot of the donations are open-ended. They're like, hey, if you need it for, you know, up to six months, eight months, you know, I only use it one weekend a year, so help yourself. Um, some have been amazing, these, these people that have come through for some of these families, and some aren't even on loan. A lot of people have just signed over um, their old RVs or pop-up trailers. Um, they've just been signing them over and be like, this is your home while you rebuild. Could you use any more RVs or are you good? Um, right now, I, I only am looking for three more. There's only, th I have three people on my list that I'm trying to get out of tents or out of their car. Um, what about the people in their car? Is there ways we can make them more comfortable in their cars? I wish I knew. I need to ask. I'll, I mean, I can ask and see. I Maybe go you can to take them every me to day, them. Um, and I talk to them, and, um, but a lot of them are just like, I'm okay here. This is what I'm comfortable with. I know Randy was... He literally has been in his car since the first day, and we finally just got him in a trailer okay. two days ago. So that was, I cried, I bawled like a baby. Um, so that was huge. And I know Eddie was sleeping in his truck. Um, he had the last RV that came in, and um, I need to check up with them though, because I want to see how they feel now that they're not sleeping in a car. Their body has got to be worn from that. I mean, it takes a toll. There's a lot of things that are taking a toll right now. Yeah. I know I'm losing my voice too. Just can't yell at people anymore <laughs> but it's 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 just been a day age by day it's it literally is a case-by-case -case basis with these families because so if we were to uh, come up somehow with five cars some gas cards or maybe we could even go to a gas station and set up an account where yeah. they could go and you know they're good for 
30 bucks worth of gas right. at one person at a time and right. just build an account there or something like that. It um, would be life changing. Three RVs, uh, RVs could be campers or they would need a car to pull it with. It has to be something that can drive. It can be anything. Well, because we just put Anna and William in that one right there in the middle. And I know it's it's pullable, the one that right out there. I think you could see her. Here, let me, I'm going to just stop for a second and show outside and then I'll come right back to you because there's no real perspective. Okay. This is where we are. I'm in the Gridley? Gridley? Yes. Gridley Fairgrounds in California. These guys I wake up next to every day. There's a family a guy with three young kids in this it's been raining so the tarps and the sandbags and there's you can see a tent way over there with some spray paint on it in the background and more tents these aren't um, typical people that would be in tents so they're not used to it you see off in the background over there more tents and then up here I'll just show you really quick there's some people all right, let's go back in. I just wanted to show a little perspective. What about things, if I were to start an Amazon wish list, is there anything on the wish list that we could come up with that would help people? If, I, if we were to do something like that and people were watching and they wanted to pitch in, can you think of anything? Um. I can. I know I can come up with some things because I know that there's, some families have posted wish lists. Um, and they've been posting them online trying to get people. Can you put me with, in touch with those people? Yeah, of course. There's actually a Facebook page called um, Paradise Adopt a Family. And so people will post their wish lists and um, things on there and people can buy for them. Okay, so Paradise Adopt a Family on Facebook. I know a lot of people that watch my channel don't necessarily go on Facebook. Um, and we don't want to duplicate things if they're getting them on one list we don't want to put them on another so we're gonna to have to figure out the detail the details on that or is there well, any consistent thing too, maybe and pardon me i can get you a link possibly i could try and text you a link okay um and see what we can do on that i set a mailbox up too yesterday so i can okay. receive things i can put up a wish list and receive things here awesome awesome so items like that any, anything consistently that people could use that comes to mind it's so inconsistent okay. is the thing. Um, it literally, you know, I can go to one family and they're like, hey, do you have an extra blanket? It got a little cold last night. And I can go to the next and they're like, you know, a heating pad or some just want a Kleenex or baby wipes to clean it. It's literally like, it's so, I think I have enough for a house in my car right now because it's so, the, it varies so greatly. Okay. Um, some people just might want extra socks or, you know, and it, it it's drastically different, you know, depending on where you walk. For some people, the, the uh, clean underwear in the right size is a huge difference for them. Okay. Would you, what do you got going the rest of the afternoon? Um, today I got to fix a couple tarps that got mixed, messed up in the crazy winds. That okay, so I can help you with that. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I told Crystal I'd help her with her laundry, but I can help her with her laundry either later today or tomorrow. Yeah. Would you, I've got my motorcycle and it doesn't have a back seat on it. This is what I'm thinking right now. Would you be interested in going with me, like driving me, us in your car? I saw a car lot, a used car lot down the road and used car lots are usually owned by individuals mm -hmm. and they usually go to auctions. Right. Why don't we go talk to him and see what he can come up with for five cars off the top of his head when the next auction is, what he thinks he can get for how much, and if he'd be willing to swing some cars our way for maybe cost or just above cost in light of the situation. Right. Would you do that with me? There's, there's one right here on the corner. Okay, so right we can walk to it. Yeah, we can walk to okay, it. so we'll just walk over to it and okay. talk to him. Yeah. Um, maybe we could even, you know, give him a shout out on camera that might get him some business yeah. in return. So we'll, we'll work on the cars. Um, how about we'll do that and then we got to come up with money. Would you be willing to set up a GoFundMe for these people's cars sure. that I could direct people to? Sure. So we'll go figure out what the guy says on what kind of cars we can get because we don't want to get them cars that are going to be broken in right. six months. Right. But we, we don't have to give them Cadillacs either. No, 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 no. no. We're, the, uh, like I said, these, these are mountain people. You know, they're, they're not used to brand new anything. Right. Um, if you try to hand somebody a brand new pair of pants, I've had a, I, no, I, well, I usually just shop at the thrift store. You know, I mean, right. it's, 
they just want something to start over and be, they're, they're literally stuck in a cycle. I, it, how are they going to go to a job interview and get a job to even make money to purchase a vehicle? They're literally stuck like in this like never ending well, cycle where without a vehicle, like there, there is no end to it. All right. So let's just get them unstuck. Okay. That's what I've been working on. So any help is appreciated. So five cars, gas for people that have cars, three RVs, wish list, paradise adopt a family on Facebook. I'll see what I can do about wish list too. There are people that are just around here. Or we can even just look on the wish list. Yeah. And try and create something different. Or I could just put one huge wish list together of the stuff that I'm seeing on the wish list. It's for the people that don't have a Facebook. Mm. We can work on that too. Okay. Okay. So we'll work on a master wish list and then uh, socks and underwear. And we'll go talk to the guy, the car salesman. And then to fix tarps. Yes. Is there anything else you would like to say? Um, I just really want to say I, I have been personally overwhelmed with the amount of generosity that I've seen nationwide. And I'm going to cry saying it. it. It's not even, I've always loved this community that I live in because it's, it's a community that we stand together and no matter what happens to anybody, you know, we have a whole community here to back us. But I, I will say it's been overwhelming to see the amount of people that have come and offered help and um, it's humbling and it's, it's, it's amazing and it just makes you believe in people again. Um, because like you said, I mean, even the people, you know, down here that might not be doing the best things and they might not be the best people, they're still human beings um, and they still need our help. And no matter what the amount of, no matter what I, I feel we're, we're going to get everybody to that next step and everybody will eventually be okay. Right. And it might, it will never be normal again, but it will be a new normal. Mm, it could be sense. better. Right. It could actually be better. Um, I mean, these are our neighbors. Yep. You know, they're the people we play against them in football every year. Um, literally they're just our neighbors up the hill and to see nationwide, the amount of support that has come through is, is humbling and amazing. And I thank everybody for that. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to, let me put the camera on me for a second. Make sure I'm centered right. We're gonna cut it here and I'm gonna put this up. And off the top of my head, I'm thinking 10 grand on the GoFundMe would be five $2,000 cars. We'll see if the number has to go up or down on that, but let's start with that. When I turn this off, I'm gonna start it uploading and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna sit down and make Crystal start the GoFundMe in her name. It's gonna be tied to all your contact information. I don't wanna be a part of that um, in that way. I do want to be a part of it to get the funds going. So if you're watching this and you're so inclined to help these guys, there's going to be a GoFundMe link down below. Click that link and pitch in what you can. Here's how GoFundMe's work to help people, okay? Listen on this, all right? Put in $2. Because if this video gets 10,000 hits, see what I'm saying? So don't think, oh, I'm too broke. Oh, this or that. Put in like $1, $2. That's how like crowdfunding really is supposed to work. And if we do it that way, nobody takes the hit. I'm gonna put money into it too. I have cost in getting up here from uh, Parker, but I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, hit up the GoFundMe for the cars. Uh, if you have an RV that you think it's time for it to have a different home so somebody can have hope to start fresh, contact me at enigmaticnomadics at gmail.com and we'll work out how to get it to them. Let's see what else do we have on here. So three RVs. I'll get a wish list going. I'll consolidate a wish list with Crystal, and I have an address set up here. I'll set it up to this address. I've already paid for it, and we can get them whatever it is that they need. And maybe we can put some socks and underwear and things on that too. I don't want to get too crazy on uh, getting the wrong sizes and stuff. And get gas cards. I don't even really know how that works, but um, maybe we'll figure that out. If you if you know of a way to get a gas card, what are the stations around here? Um, there's a 7-Eleven is the most common one. The other ones are like a little fast trip, fast trip and fast track. But so is there a 7-Eleven gas card you can get? Yeah. Okay, I'll put my address down. I'll tell you what it is right here. It's the UPS store. The UPS store. The guy's name's Scotty. He says Scott on his business card, but he says Scotty on his shirt. So I know he goes by Scotty. It's 2 East Gridley Road, Suite B, Gridley, California, 95948. And my box is number 212. So if you want to get a, a 7-Eleven gas card, 
in whatever denomination you're comfortable with, please pick it up and ship it here. There's probably a way you can go online and have it just shipped online and not even have to go through any of the steps besides just doing it online. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. Thank you for everything you did with the van build. We were able to pull off a very successful van build. As you're seeing from the videos, there's much more content to come. It's being disseminated little by little as it, you know, it takes a long time to edit it. But thank you for everyone that pitched in for that. It was a smashing success because of you. And so let's make this a smashing success too. And I don't mean in a way that like hurts anybody financially if you're strapped or whatever. We're just talking about a dollar here, a dollar there. Group numbers make a big difference. And I will show you, I'm gonna stick around long enough to show you this happening. So you see the people getting their cars and you see the people getting their stuff and everything. Some people I don't wanna really put on camera because they're a little bit shell shocked and I'm not trying to, you know, guy with a camera sometimes it just doesn't work, but I'll get what I can. Thank you for watching and head down to those links and click them and help some people out if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching and we'll have more of how this unfolds very soon. Thanks.